Hey guys, good morning. It is September 11th, 2019. Welcome to the Fat Quarter Shop live stream. We are in week five of our Stitch Along with Happy Camper. And so the first two weeks we did the top, the third week we did the truck, then the camper, and now we're going to do the text. Um, and I have a ton of stuff for you after this. Um, I'm going to kind of start with just kind of showing you some things that I've done to make mine different. Because I do think it's always good when you do a project to change it up just a little bit. So this is where I'm at right now. And I took inspiration from Shelby. And I, I pulled out Piggy's ears and tail and redid them. So I did that. I changed my words to be 3705, which is the pink in the door, because when I put the door of the camper, I really loved how it popped out. And I like pink better than red, so I made that change. And on the P, I made it one stitch longer on all three of the P's just because I thought the P should be a little bit longer. So those are the changes that I've done. And um, I'm going to show you why I am doing my words kind of funny. So when I'm working with 25 count, it's not Ada. And so kind of right here. So when I'm starting with 25 count and I'm not doing Ada, it's much harder to count your squares because I'm not used to it because I'm new at it. So I started and I did the Y because that was easiest to count from the tire. And then I did the H because that was easiest to count from the tire. And then I filled in. And then I went over here and I thought, well, gosh, counting all the way to C would be really hard to go this way and really hard to go this way. So I thought, well, what's the easiest? So I started with the P because I could count down from the tire. And I did the E and the R because that was easier to count. And now I'm going to go in reverse. So I'm kind of just going in the order that is easiest for me to count because um, I'm just not as efficient yet with this Lugana. So um, I'm just kind of all over the place. So I'm going to show you the back also. And the reason I'm going to show you the back is because I am doing every letter individually so I'm not traveling between the H and the A or the A and the P I'm just keeping them all individual because I don't want that thread to peek through now if you don't mind that that's totally fine you can do whatever you want to do I kind of did the same thing with the trees I'm not traveling with my thread I'm just doing each section and stopping but of course you can do um, whatever you want to do and you can see that on the dog it's a little bit messier because I did have to pull out all of those stitches to redo. And I'm just going to give a big credit to Shelby because um, I uh, couldn't figure out what she did. So I literally had her email me what she did and then said it my computer and copied it. So what she did is she did three stitches. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. So top, side, bottom around the head and then the tail she just um, went one stitch up and she just did two and I thought well Piggy doesn't have a very big tail so I should probably just do one but when I just did one stitch it looked really funny it didn't even look like a tail so um, so that was fun and so that's a great example of even though you've done something you can be inspired by other people of course Shelby was like yeah sure you can do it too so um, I changed that up so now I'm just gonna start stitching and um, we'll move the camera a little bit and I'm going to be using my handy little magnifier and so I'm on the M And I'm traveling up. So 
So it's kind of hard um, to do this on camera at like a certain angle so I can go really fast at home. Uh, it took me an hour and a half to do the letters yesterday. I was behind. So yesterday it took me an hour and a half to do the happy purr. Um, so I think the letters take about two hours and then on the bottom row it's going to take just as much as week one. So I'm just following my pattern as I go. I'm using Pat Carson size 26 needles. They um, happen to be what I use on Lugana. Now if I'm working with Ada, I usually use John James size 26 because um, John James Petite because I can travel faster with those on Ada. So I kind of vary between stuff. And last week y'all had asked me about the ballpoint needles and I still haven't tried them out but maybe I will this week I am um, I'm kind of like I don't really want to change in the middle of a product project and so that's kind of why I haven't tried them out I don't I think that's kind of silly too that I do that but that's all right okay so I'm gonna count real quick So, so I'm just going to do the M today, so y'all let me know if y'all have any questions. I would love to see what um, changes you guys have been making. I know that a lot of you are using purple and blue flowers, which I really love. That's the main thing that I've seen. And if any of you are in... Any of you are in Utah this weekend, I will be at the Festival of Quilts that is being sponsored by Riley Blake, and I will be there with Lori. Um, she's doing, we're doing a class together Friday morning, and then at night, she's at later in the day, she's doing a class, and I'm going to just go help her because I just want to hang out with her. And then we are having, if you are a quilter, we're having a layer cake sale today, so if you want to grab some layer cakes... We also have that this week. All right. We have a question from Pat Bro. Uh, she says, do you usually turn down the room lights to use your lighted magnifier, Kimberly, or is it only for the purposes of filming? Um, yeah, it's, we actually just turned down the camera settings. So the lighting in the room is the same. It's just you can't, you can't see it with uh, the camera. Yeah, so I always have the lights on as much as possible. So if I'm in the car stitching, I turn my car lights on. If I am in my bedroom, I turn every single bedroom light on. And if I'm in my living room, I turn on my living room, my front lights, my kitchen lights. So yes, I always have a lot of lights, as many lights as I can. I don't have the best eyesight. So um, sometimes cross stitching can be challenging for me. So um, that's just a setting that Lily has. And the reason she has it is so that you can see. But the, in, the, in the room, we've got full lights and windows open and all kinds of stuff. Okay, this is from Chris Lee. Kimberly, I'm coming to Utah, and I have a thank you gift for you from my students. You donated vintage cloths for my cross-stitching fourth graders. Oh, my goodness. I'm excited. Well, you'll have to find me. I will be there first thing Friday morning. Lori and I plan to get there around 8. I will be there all day. And um, if you find Lori, I will be with her, and I can't wait to, to see what you have. Um, my kids, I will tell you a funny little story. My twins are in fifth grade, and they are doing student council. Like, you can run for student council, and so they filled out their forms last night. And I'm so proud of them. So I'm hoping that at least one of them gets it. And I, I feel really bad, because one of my kids... Um, usually gets everything and the other one doesn't so I'm hoping that this time they both they both can get it but I was so proud of what they wrote um, it made me feel like a good parent when I read what they wrote and Roxanne White says are you doing two by one with two threads or two over one I am doing two threads over I'm using two threads and I'm going over two. 
This is 25 count Lugana. It is Lori Holt's fabric and I love it. Um, I can go much faster on Ada though. So um, I like this cloth and I've been using it a lot. But I'm still going to say that Ada is my favorite. Like I don't think Ada will ever um, in my heart go away. I love me some Ada. Christine really says, what is the advantage of ballpoint needles and cross stitch? So they're really thin and sharp and um, just some different people have used them. I actually don't know the advantages because I haven't tried them out yet. Um, so I, I will go ahead and do that. Since I'm going to Utah, I can maybe try it on the plane or something. I'll have a lot of time to stitch on the plane. And I have them in my bag, so it's just kind of like a... Um, superstitious thing like I don't want to I don't like to change things I don't like change and so if I start a project in one needle I just want to keep it through the whole thing which is so silly but that's just kind of how I am in my life I'm so kind of stuck in my ways so there we go so I've got the last two and hopefully I didn't make any mistakes but you can see I just travel um, as I go, I've only got two letters left. I'm going to go ahead and finish this, show you how I finish it, and then um, show you some other creative stuff that that we have. Um, so there's my M. And you can see on my P, if you want to see that up close, I just went one stitch down. So it was supposed to end here. I just went one stitch down. And I don't know, anytime I do anything, I like to change it just slightly so that it can feel like I have a little bit of creativity in it. So now I'm going to finish it. So on the back, I'm just going to run my needle through three or four or five stitches, something like that. I just kind of run it, clip it, and then we're done. So I'm just going to clip that. And when I clip my threads, I do clip very close to the edge. These are the only scissors I use. These Omni Grid. I love these scissors. Um, they're pretty expensive, but they last forever. So that's what I have for stitching today. And so we can go ahead and I can get all my other stuff out. So, okay, let me just adjust the camera settings here. So to put this in my bag, I literally just um, fold it up a little bit. I usually, I well, I always fold my stitching on the inside so that when I fold it, I'm covering my stitching so if anything gets on it, it goes on the back. And I just kind of fold it and I throw it in my bag and I'm ready to go. So now I'm going to show you some other uh, happy campers uh, that we've been doing at Fat Quarter Shop. These are all my staff. So this first one is Shelby's. So she's stitching on 30 count Portobello. And see, okay, with her dog, you can really see the difference and you can really see her um, ears and tail if you want to make yours look like Shelby's. And I love her little Airstream or whatever that thing is, the camper. That's super cute. So that's Shelby's. And then we have Cody's, and Cody is, she is using the Cory Yoder DMC Thread Pack. Sorry, guys. And she is stitching on the 14 count whitewashed board by Fabric Flare. So she's just using a thread pack, and hers, so you can see her ears on her animal. And then this is Denise's, and she's got her blue bonnets and her red truck. So she's total Texas. <laughs> Sorry guys. And I wanted to point out that she is using the 25 count Lugana and she is using the non-modeled side. So you can see the color difference and you can see that she um, stitched her edges down before she started. I was a little too lazy to do that and I think she's doing a gray trailer. So Super cute. 
And then we have Cheryl's. Now Cheryl wins the award, obviously, for being the fastest. She is stitching on beautiful beige 28 count and she's almost done. And she is using um, classic color works and we, if you need the list of those, we can get those to you. We have said them on a previous video, but you can see really in her door and in her camper and in her truck, that color variation. And so you can see how hers looks totally different than ours because she is using dyed floss, hand dyed floss. So that is what we have for Happy Camper. We, we have a ton more, but I wanna take any questions that you guys have on Happy Camper to start. Uh, we had a question earlier from Donna Cook saying, can you say what determines the length, eye, and point on the needle? So um, on the eye, I believe it is, the eye is based on 24, 26, 28. So 24 has a bigger eye, 26 smaller, 28 super smaller, and it's also the thinness of the needle. So, but the length, is totally up to the manufacturer and that's what I think um, but I could be technically wrong but I, I'm pretty sure I'm right because I've said that a couple times and nobody's corrected me and I do read all of your guys comments so thank you for commenting because I read them every night before I go to bed sometimes I fall asleep reading them um, so size 24 is this is really small 28 is bigger so if you were doing like a 10 count remember, 24 is bigger. sorry 24 is bigger I said it totally wrong. So if you're working with 10 count, you would use like a size 24, which is a bigger needle. And if you're working with like say 14 count, you would use 26 count, 26 size. And if you were working with something smaller, you would go even lower. And a few people commented on your orange nail polish and Vicki Robles said Kimberly is getting ready for Halloween. I, okay, so I went to this nail place. So I'll tell you, I have some nail places that I like. And the place that I like the least amount is the place next to my daughter's dance, but she lives there. So I had to go there Sunday and they have like no colors. And so I was kind of, I, they really didn't have very much to pick from. So I kind of don't like them, but that's okay. They, they just, they're a little neon for me. Um, but they, I don't know, they just take forever and they're not very nice. And I'm always oh. like, why do I, and every time it's like that thing. It's like, why do you go somewhere expecting a different result? Same thing. And every time I go in the nail place, I want to curse myself for going in there because they take forever. They don't know what they're doing. They have the ugliest colors. But I mean, I don't really know anywhere else around there to go. But I'm going to have to find somewhere. Sorry. <laughs> I'm distracted. Okay. Um, Rita Campbell is asking, I'm going to be at the quilt show also. Do you know of any fun cross-stitch stores in Utah? I've never been to a brick and mortar stitching store. There is a place called Craft Central, I believe. Craft is in the name. I've been there a couple of times and um, it's, I don't even know what city it's in, but it's near there. And then Shepherd's Bush is amazing. But that's an hour north, I believe. I've never been there, but Lori has told me all about it and sent me pictures and bought me a ton of stuff from there. So those are the two that I know of. And then a uh, comment from Dot Dot Goose Design. Your stitches are very even, Kimberly. Beautiful job. Thank you, and I love your bags. I gotta buy one. So Dot Dot Goose has bags on Etsy. Don't think that I'm not trolling that Etsy, like, looking. <laughs> um, but I'm like, I'm like that person who's like, oh, well... If I buy it, then I won't stop buying. It's kind of like going to like the makeup counter. It's like I need one thing and then you're gonna buy a bunch. So then you can't decide. But she makes cute bags. All right, Virginia Warren says, who sells ballpoint or can I find them? So we sell them at Fat Quarter Shop. We're currently sold out of some of them. The brand is Sullivan's and, and we have hundreds on order because we cannot keep them in stock. Um, we buy them, there's only two places we can buy them from and they're always sold out. So um, we have them, but I'm gonna try them and I'm gonna give you an honest review. I mean, I try to be honest and tell you what I really think. Um, so I will make a point to do it this week. And Camille Levy says, I miss what brand of light you're using, just had eye surgery. Let me see it. So we have this on our coming soon page. We can put a comment in the below. It's daylight. 
It's uh, two five, model 25201. It's called Halo Go. It's brand new. And we bought 10 of them, or 20, I can't remember. But they're really expensive, and I um, didn't think people would buy them because it was a lot for me to buy. Um, but what I do like is I usually, I don't have it now because we're on film, but I put my little piggy needle minder here. And then when I sit in my bed, I have piggy there. And then piggy's next to me. It's like the piggy thing. Um, but I like the metal because I can put my needle um, either on the metal or on the needle minder. Um, but we're going to have more in September. The manufacturer is totally out until then, but it's a brand new um, product. Or brand new that I know of. Brand new when we went to market, I'll say. I think they had previous ones. I don't know about those. I think they're discontinued. Uh, sewing, Becca says, does a magnifier have to sit on the table? So you always have to be sitting in front of a table, or does it fit in your lap in okay, some way? Okay, this is what I do. So you're going to have to scroll down, Lily. Okay. I show my fat thighs. This is what I do in bed, or in my car. That's what I do and put it right here. Um, so if I'm in my bed, it'll usually go here. It usually just sits. Um, and I'll, or I'll have a pillow. But in my car, for sure right here. Because I gotta use it. Like I, I have to use, I can't. Like if this, if I don't have this, oh no. The stitches will be really bad. Um, about Happy Camper, Deborah Henderson says, are the eyes French knots? They are straight stitches. And I made mine super small. I made mine, um, you know, if you go over two on 25 count, I did over one. Most people I've seen online and, and everyone I've seen that works for me that does it is doing over two. I just wanted tiny eyes, but I don't backstitch. Me and backstitch are not friends. Um, so if I backstitch, um, I go down the hall. Dee, 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 dee. Shelby, can you put some backstitches in? Thanks. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> Come back. I'm not doing backstitches. And we do have a video on backstitches and colonial knots that Cheryl did that's amazing because um, I don't know how to do them. Um, I like the sound of you going down the hallway. Dee, 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 dee. Um, oh, Pam Zaraski says, when is Lily going to start cross stitch? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> I kind of do, but not, not, not enough to say I cross stitch. Um, okay, Lily Garcia says, last video you mentioned that you were going to have green Ada 14, but I didn't find it in the store. Could you help me, please? It was mentioned for Halloween hoopla. We have it. It's called Tropical Green. Tropical Green. So search Tropical Green Ada or Tropical Green Linen. We have 32, 16, and 14. And we have 32, 16, and 14. <laughs> Sewing Becca says, thanks, no big thighs noticed in demo. LOL. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just being funny. That's hilarious. Oh, and then Wilma Evans wants to know, did you get your washer fixed? Oh, my goodness, you really want to know. So, um, okay, so I had, I'm going to start the story from the beginning for anybody that doesn't know. So we do our laundry at the end of the week on Saturday, Sunday. So we let all six of our laundry pile up. So on Saturday or Sunday, like in August, I went to do our laundry and it was broke. But I thought, oh, it's fine. I kept going back and it was broke. Then Kevin couldn't fix it. So then we went and ordered a, a whatever, new washer and dryer. And um, I went to seven stores. I finally found one. They could deliver it the next Tuesday. So great. On Tuesday, they come and they come in concave. So somehow on the truck, they smushed. So obviously, they can't deliver them well. They were supposed to come the next Monday, which is six days later. So Kevin stayed home from work because I had a doctor's appointment and because I usually do all that stuff. But they never showed up. They showed up on Tuesday, which was yesterday. So now um, we have it and we're happy with it and we love it and we're so happy. So we're running laundry all like crazy. But I will say this Saturday, I should have showed that picture. Um, okay, so I took a picture in my car. Maybe Denise can find it and we can pop it up. Um, so Denise, so, or, but you can log in my cell phone. Um, I got in the car on Saturday. I had like, you know, you have those moments where you're just like, I can't take it. I can't take it. So I had to get up at crack it on to take Emma to dance. She had to be there at eight, which means I don't like to be late anywhere. So that means I got to be there at 745. I get donuts for my kids and I'm like, you know what? I need clean sheets. I can't live in these sheets. I can't live in these dirty sheets. I gotta have some sheets. So I called Kevin. I said, okay, get up. We're going to the laundromat. I'm gonna take everything in the car. When I get home, and I'm taking everything. So I, get, I walk in the car, I walk in the house, and I'm like telling my boys, because Emma's obviously not there. I'm like, throw everything in the car. Get all the dirty clothes from upstairs, every room. 
So I put all the dirty clothes in my car. I drive to the laundromat. I get six loads going with Peyton. Peyton's helping me. He's my helper. He does everything I ask. And then I'm like, well, there's no bras here. What's going on? I forgot my laundry. So I had to call Kevin, and I was like, Kevin, please drive my laundry. And it took two, it only took two hours and like 15 minutes, and we had eight loads in the washer, the dryer, and then I half folded them, ran home, like literally ran home, threw everything in the house, got Emma in the car, because she had to go back to dance. I mean, like, it was just like, oh no, I had to go pick her up from dance. I can't remember. I can't even remember, but um, yeah. It was crazy, and we had clean clothes. It was so lovely. So there's my story. Okay. Uh, and I'll load the picture in a sec. Um, it's funny. It's the whole back of my car. <laughs> that one in the washers. Yeah. Oh, the washers. Uh, Lisa Sweet says, Kim, your shirt looks like Lori Holt Granny Chic. It is, I think, Liberty of London or something. But I haven't worn it before. I bought it, and I haven't worn it. I, bought, I wore it because it's, like, super hot here. It's hot and humid. Okay. Um, and then uh, Pam Etain says, when will the halo lights be back in stock? Late September. We have ordered them from three places, directly from the manufacturer and from two different, um, what do you call those? Distributors. Distributors to see which comes first. So we'll have a lot. Um, I just didn't buy that many because I thought, oh, they're too expensive. But then now everybody wants one. Okay, and then Rita Campbell says, are you going to be at Lori's trunk show on Saturday? Yes, I'm going to be holding all the quilts and helping her, and I will be there. Um, yes, and then, um, yeah. Okay, and, oh, Candy Kerr says, I need a video on Algerian eyelet stitch. I think okay. that's something we could do. Okay, Denise will ask Cheryl about that, because I don't know what that is. Um, oh, Shannon Bromo says, can we meet Lily in front of the camera? We need to put a face to her voice. Do you want to come out here? I can go out there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move and Lily can sit down for oh, like Oh, man. Minute. I'm going to run to the bathroom while Lily, oh. Lily talks for a Oh, minute. man. No, Denise, can you look at the comments? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, oh, I can see myself. Hello. I'm Lily. I'm the videographer here at the Fat Quarter Shop. I look at all your lovely comments on the laptop over there. Denise is over there right now. Um, this is interesting. Um, I saw someone asking about how my vacation was. It was lovely. I went to New York City and Connecticut to visit my cousin, uh, who, uh, she's an au pair out in Connecticut. Um, and I went for my birthday. It was my birthday last Saturday. And it, we had a blast. I've never been to the East Coast, let alone, alone uh, New York and Connecticut. So, had a blast. Um, we got to see The Lion King on Broadway. Wanted to see it since I was like four years old. It's been a while. Um, I am 25, if anyone wants to know. Um, I, like I said, I don't consider myself a cross-stitcher. I love cross-stitching. I've tried it in the past, um, but I just don't have time for that right now. But if I did, I would do it. I, <laughs> I always add cross-stitch patterns to um, my wish list on the website, so maybe one day. And Kimberly has returned, so I will hand the seat back to her. Okay, so guys, I'm going to start showing you some finishes because we have a ton of finishes. So this is the first one. This is if you were in our Chalk Full Club, you would have got this a couple months ago. This is by Priscilla Blaine and Kathy Haberman of Hands on Design. And Priscilla finished it for me, almost cried. I love it. And it has a little thing on the back. So I can set it down, so I can't wait to take it home today. So big shout out to Priscilla and Chelsea for helping me finish it. It is, I'm going to read to you on the back, it is Hobby Lobby number 1643352. This is a, some kind of um, check, and then she did a covered button that matches it, and then a little bow. So that's one of our finishes. Our second finish... It's right here. This is Cottage on the, sorry, Cottage on the Corner by Bunny Hill Designs. So this is the pattern. This is my front. And this is my back. 
so I'm gonna walk you through now how I did this now we do have kits available the kit includes the floss the pattern and the thread it does not include the frame or any of the fabric but I'm gonna walk you through and kind of talk to you about what I did when I did this so step one this is in my sewing room and what I did was I just this is before I sewed anything I just cut some strips put it and that's just laying it out on my table to see if I liked the the distance between the cross stitch and the fabric and I just wanted to see how the frame looked so I kind of adjusted it until I liked it and then the next step I did once I liked my layout once I liked my layout I used a friction pin because that will disappear with heat later and just drew a line right on my cloth I used Ada so I just went straight down that line and that line basically meant that that is the amount I wanted shown. So from there, I went ahead and trimmed a quarter inch away from that line. And that's me trimming that. And then my next step, that is it trimmed. And so um, I took a lot of time doing that. I tried to make it as even as I could before I added the fabric. And then that, I'm kind of going out of order now, but that is the back. So that is the, I took some foam core board that I bought at Michael's and I made it the exact size of the back of my frame. I used Lori Holt's medium vintage, vintage frame. It's eight and a half by, or it's eight inches square and um, family tree frame company made those for us and the paint on the outside is shabby popped corn but i made the foam core board exactly the same so not anything extra because i wanted it to fit in here and i'm going to show you on the back when we're done how it doesn't pop out and i didn't have to add any tape so i cut that the exact size and then the next step i did was oh that's for the yeah that's that's the board sorry that's the board for me to put on the front so I used actually okay that is sticky board sorry but I made it again exact same size as the frame opening so as you can see on the back there's this frame opening I measured it and I cut that sticky board and the foam core board the same exact size so that's my sticky board and I glued on the non the non-sticky non side I used some little applique glue Roxanne's glue based it and just glued some batting down and then trimmed around it and then I went ahead and I sewed the sides so I think everything's out of order here sorry guys um, I had sewn the sides of the fabric but the fabric is missing anyway so I added the two side fabrics added the top and bottom fabrics and then on the back is that not it okay can you go back to the previous one yeah sorry it's okay so I added the borders top and bottom left and right and then on the back I kind of just looked at I put the put the board on top of it just trim I didn't trim anything but I just drew a line around it to see um, how it was going to look on the front and to make sure it was centered exactly in that sticky board and then I trimmed a little bit like two or three inches around and then what I did on the next one is it is the foam core board sorry guys so this is foam core board so I used applique pins and just put that around the foam core board on the front put the applique pins in and those applique pins are still in my work and by using those lines on the back it really helps me line it up and then the next screen is that is me putting it in so this is it's in there but then I needed to do the back piece. So the 
so that's how I when I put it in that's how it looks and so you can see that my pins are still in there on the side it's really taut I have nothing in there holding it in except it's just fit in there really nice and snug so again sorry guys I'm not used to finishing so that's probably why um, so basically what I did was um, put that in there and then from there I took sticky board put the fabric on the sticky side I used stitchery tape on the back on the edges pulled the tape off pulled my fabric around the edge and that's my backing so go to the next piece and then that's how my backing is so if you look here if you look here nothing is holding it in nothing so basically when I did the front I mean you can push it out but when I did the front and the back pieces it's just the exact same size and nothing is coming out so that's how I did this. So basically, again, I just cut this out, added to the left and the right. I'm going to take it out so you can see it because it'll go right back in. This is the side of it. So you can see those applique pins are still in it. And this is stuck to it, and I didn't glue it or anything, but when I had that sticky tape on there, it just stuck to it. So I've got foam core board on the front sticky board on the back they're the exact same size and you just pop it in now I will tell you that it's not exactly square so you got to go the right direction but there you go super easy and what I really like about it is I didn't glue anything to my cross stitch so if I ever want to change this or do something different nothing is glued down nothing is hot glued down I can take this in and out just like that so if I want to do a different one and you know change it out for the seasons or something I can do that so that's my tutorial for today that's a finish it was really easy for me to finish so there's of course a kit for this and of course we sell the frame and the fabric separately the fabric is Harvest Road it's not in stock yet it is by Vanessa Gertzen for Moda and one thing that I did do is when I made this I knew what fabric I wanted to finish it in because I love the fabric. So I took the fabric piece, went to our DMC carousel, and picked all my thread so that when I got to finish it, I knew exactly what I was going to do because I really want to be able to incorporate quilting and sewing into cross stitch. So if you'll have let's see if we have any questions because I know that I flubbed that up just a little bit but it's because guys I want to teach you what I do but I'm very new at this guys so I just kind of go in my sewing room and have fun and I'm um, just kind of think it out and I go I do I will say I go really slow because I'm not great at it so I have to really take my time and think about what I'm doing I can't just run in there and like slap it together it takes me quite a while to think it out Okay, um, I think you answered this, but Fiona okay. Payne was saying, I love how you match the fabric to the floss colors. Did you do a floss toss on the fabric you wanted to use, or vice versa? Yeah, so I just went, I actually took this straight to my DMC rack and just picked. Because still, um, you know, people, are, we still, we sell all the fancy floss, um, all the hand-dyed floss, and that's all great. I still prefer DMC, or R floss, or Cosmo. I still prefer that plain thread. Um, and... I think everyone was saying that you did a great job on your finish and they love it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I really like it too. I, um, I'm really proud of it. I will say that. Uh, and Doc Doc Goose Design was saying, uh, do you sell that fabric? I would love to make a project bag to match the stitching. So it's coming in in September or October. October. And it is by Layla Boutique and it's called Harvest Road. And we have, Moda will send us some pre-cuts ahead of time. So this is leftover from a previous project that I already made in that collection and I saved this piece and this is just straight from a layer cake. And the back piece is another section from the layer cake because I didn't have any, I don't have any yardage yet either. So October, but really, yeah, I really, I really love it. And then uh, from Tina Steven, she said, maybe a stupid question, would the halo light work in Germany due to different power strength? Um, let me see the plug. 
So I'll show you the plug that it comes with. Um, that's not a stupid question. I don't know how to answer it, but it comes with this plug, which is, mm, what is that called? USB. USB. And then you plug it into this thingy-majiggy. So I guess if you had a this thingy-majiggy for the version of Germany, then it'd be fine. You would just need to change this thing out, I would think, right, mm -hmm. Lily? Yeah, that sounds right to me. Yeah. So, and, and so what I do is I plug it in, and then when I, uh, like when I'm in bed, it's plugged in, so it never goes off. But if I'm in my living room, the light lasts for one hour. So after an hour of stitching, i got to go plug it in and then um, take a little break and go back. Um, and then Shannon Berkemeyer says, are we able to purchase past harvest chalk patterns uh, that is on the table? Yes, so we have all the patterns available and it, within the pattern, if you click into it, it tells you all the floss you need and all of that. So another finish I have is this. Oh my gosh. I know. It's, I'm so, so, so proud of it. So this is Patchwork Halloween by Jardin Preeth, and I picked my own floss. I put it on 25 count Lori Holt Lugana oatmeal, and I went to my carousel rack, or um, I might have bought this floss at, at Michael's, actually. I can't remember, but I bought the floss. I made it up, changed all the floss, and we put together a kit, but again, I wanted to combine my love of sewing with cross stitch. So I put, so we have kits of this, and we have had the kits for a while. Obviously, the kit would just be this. Next week, I'm going to do a walkthrough of exactly what I did, but this is a pillow that I bought that was pre-made at Target. Target. So if you want to find this, this is a Target. It's pre-made because one of the things I wanted you guys to realize is you don't have to know how to make a pillow. You can just add to it. So what I did is I added grunge around it. I'll walk you through next week. I added an old, I pulled this from my stash. This is a fabric from Farmhouse 2 by Fig Tree from years ago. It was in my stash. Added it. I'm going to show you how I turned it under and this is all hand stitched. So there's my stitching and I've made it really tight. So it looks like this pillow. It looks like, like um, I made the pillow too. Or I sewed this into it, but I didn't. I just put my, put, put this right on top. And the best thing about this pillow is it has little squares and grids. So I was able to like count and it was easy to keep straight. And the only thing that is holding this down behind, besides my stitches is I put some stitch witchery under the grunge. So there is no glue or anything under my cross stitch so if I ever wanted to take it apart no, nothing is under there holding it and it's it's good so I'm going to show you next week how I did this so that's another one of my finishes and then I have two more finishes these are I guess FFOs so I have shown you these before but I got them back from the framer yesterday so this is April Cottage by Country Cottage Needleworks, and I used all the called for DMC colors. So there's my April. And then I finished May. So today I have five months fully finished. So that's super, super, super awesome. And then I had a question on YouTube about my Be Thankful, which is one of my first cross stitches that I got back into it. So I'm gonna pop up a picture of it hanging in my house because someone asked so I thought okay I'll show it so that's the entry away to my house on the left and there's my be thankful and then you can see on the right um, that's the picture of my family and then my little uh, entryway and I have a little quilt on my table but that's how it looks hanging so I thought I would show that so now um, I can take any questions and then I still have more so um, I still have a lot more a uh, question from uh, Dana Quilts. As a quilter, I send my quilt tops off to Utah to be quilted. Does anyone know of anyone who finishes cross-stitch projects? I don't know anybody who does them for payment. I know that, like, if you wanted to get it framed, framed, you could go to a local needle workshop. Um, maybe. I don't really know. And... 
Uh, Cindy Chris says, uh, does Fat Corner Shop have pre-cut hexagon fabrics? We are going to have some in Tula Pink's newest collection. She is the only designer that still has the manufacturer making those. So we might have some of her older collections and her future collection is coming in that. But that's Free Spirit is the only company making those right now that I know of. And Virginia Warren says glass or no glass for framed cross stitch. Any opinions? Uh, I do glass if I get it professionally framed. So this one is glass and it is non-glare museum glass. So you can see there you can see the glass. But with this obviously there's no glass because I don't know how to cut glass and um, so I guess I do it both ways. I prefer glass but if I'm going to do it myself there's no way I'm doing glass. Um, oh and Donna Cook was asking uh, is there a way to get Lori's basic happy colors but not in the whole box? No um, we sell each of our patterns will sell like our floss set or a DMC set um, but we do list if you go to that our fill box click into it at the bottom you can see the colors and then you know you could look up each color and just buy the colors you wanted individually that would be the only way questions coming in okay um, oh Vicki Robles says Hobby Lobby used to frame do they still do that I think so and I think Michael's does too. I think Aaron's mm -hmm. Brothers Framing got, the, the name got purchased by Michael. So when you go in there, they now have a larger variety of, or a larger selection of frames. At least the one by my house has a ton more than, than they used to have. Um, I don't usually take my stuff there. Uh, so I don't have any like experience. I know that Cheryl does Hobby Lobby, um, but yeah, sorry. Uh, Sharon Arvise Madison says, is that a frame you sell in your shop? Yes, so this is an 8 inch frame. It is handmade. You will see that it is pretty pricey, but it is handmade. So it is not only handmade, it is hand painted, hand everything. And I like that it has the antique look to it. And the color just really matches. So it's a frame that Lori had um, us get Lori picked some different finishing, some different sizes, and her frames, there are three sizes, a small, medium, and large, and they, if you have the Farm Girl Vintage 2 book, she has in the very back a section on how you can um, add to her blocks to frame them. So if you wanted to use it in quilting or cross stitch, you could use it in either. Okay, uh, Denise Bromit says, what size and color cloth did you do Be Thankful on? Tin count burlap Lori Holt vintage cloth. And I use the modeled side. There's two sides to that, and I use the modeled side. And it has RF floss in the kit. And about the picture that we showed from Be Thankful, Stitching with the Sisterly says, What was the glass bubble? The chandelier? Yeah, that's a chandelier that I don't like, but yes. Oh. <laughs> it was in the house when it came. It totally doesn't fit my style, but it's 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 okay. So I'm going to show you more stuff, because that's what I do. So Monaco is what Priscilla and Chelsea use. It is an even weave. And Cheryl, who works for us, brought this into my office two days ago. And so I said I wanted to show it. She didn't really think I was going to want to show it. But she watched the Priscilla and video. Priscilla and Chelsea Real Housewives of Cross Stitch video on how to tea dye and she tea dyed some. So I just wanted to show that Cheryl did that because I think that's pretty cool that she watched their video and did that. I don't know, I'm horrified of trying that. And I have more stuff to show. So this is Boo. This is by Terry. She works in our customer service and she's a member of our club. She's actually she's not a member of our club. She just buys the pattern separately. So she's stitching it on 28 count Jobelin black using Cupid, that's the red, by Classic Color Works. So we're not sure what she's going to do with the pumpkins, but we're going to show you next week. Uh, I don't want her to tell me because I want to be surprised. So um, super cute. And she did the whole thing that um, most people do where they do the white. What well, I want to say most, a lot of people, they do all the white and then come back. So that's that. 
so pretty. And then Hands On Design has a brand new pattern that came out last week called Autumn Skies. And Cheryl already finished it. So she stitched on 32 count white chocolate linen and called for DMC. So I'm a member of our fabric club. That is reading yellow on the screen, but it is not yellow. So it is white chocolate. It is not yellow at all. So that's just a monitor issue. But so I'm in the club and I want to make this, so I'm going to use my club piece that I got, pull my DMC, and I'm going to make both. And in her pattern, she gives you this little piece of wool already pre-cut. So I'm going to finish it, and we sell this little button. People were asking for this button, so we sell this little button if you want to put it on there. So that's super awesome. But yes, I, was, I, was, I will tell you I was jealous that she already finished it because I hadn't even started it. And then this is Holiday Hoopla Halloween by With Thy Needle. And Cheryl made this, and oh my gosh, Lily's going to have to zoom in because oh. it's so tiny. So she stitched on 32 count tropical green linen, which is what somebody was asking for earlier. She used some of the called for fancy floss, and she used DMC black for the bats, hat, and shoes, and DMC 712 for the white, and DMC 437 for the broom. Now I want to give a big shout out here to Java Girl Stitches because she cracks me up. She has a YouTube channel and she was showing this this week on her latest video and she was talking about the broom and how she was so frustrated and she couldn't get the broom right and she was, she left the room and she was like so frustrated and then she came back and her husband did the broom. So Aww. shout out to Java, Java Girl Stitches husband because Kevin would never do a broom for me. Aww. But I think it's awesome, and it's really, I mean, it's really cool to see in person because it's so, is that like 3D or, you yeah. know, it's like, it adds something to it. It looks great. And look at the back of that. I mean, really, people. She's amazing. Cheryl's amazing. And then we got this new pattern. I think it came last week, and I have some people over here at Fat Quarter Shop who went a little nuts on this. <laughs> uh, it's Tiny Modernist. It's called Happy Halloween, and it's a calendar. And as soon as Denise saw it, she was like, oh, I gotta make it, I gotta make it. So, first I'm gonna show you Denise's. So she is using, hold on, let me get it on the board because I can't do two things at once. So she started this like a couple nights ago. She's stitching on 25 count Lugana Stormy Night. It is temporarily out of stock because that color is amazing on all of their cloths. It's by... Uh, Swigart. And so we're just waiting for more to come in. But um, so this is the top and her piece is really big because I mean you need a really big piece for this. So this is hers. And then I'm going to show you what Cheryl's doing because Cheryl always has to be awesome. She, she outdoes all of us. Look at this. Okay, so she's doing them as ornaments. So check this oh. out. I don't know. This is so flippin' cute. Oh my goodness. And then this is her third one. She, she stitches in these little hoops. Spring tension hoops. Spring tension hoops. That's all she stitches on. She's stitching this on 32 count Joblin. She doesn't know the fabric. She just pulled it from her stash. So this is probably, I'm assuming, I haven't seen her today to ask her because I literally rolled up in here uh, five minutes before the video because of traffic. Um, but I think she's probably going to do a tree. So that's that. But then there's more. I'm going to have to do this really fast. I am working on a super secret pod project, and I'm going to flash it real quick because I want you to know that I'm working on something behind the scenes. There you go. That's your super, that's your super secret hint that I've been working on nonstop. Um, sorry. So that was my super secret project. Now I'm going to show you all of our new stuff. Well, not all of it, but what we, what we have time to show. This is. Fall for Autumn by Erica Michaels Designs. It's a new pattern. And in that pattern, oh, I don't think it was that one. Okay, sorry. Christmas Tree Trio, Christmas Tree Trio. So try to say that three times. Tree Trio, Tree Trio, Tree Trio. Okay, sorry, I'm having fun over here. Waxing Moon Designs, Christmas Tree Trio. So she does a lot of trios. And my favorite is this one right here. Cute. 
And then, Erica Michaels Mistletoe Kisses. We saw this on social media, and I really, really like that middle one. It says Candy Wishes and Mistletoe Kisses. And then, this is Erica Michaels again, Defining Autumn. So lots of text. And then she's got St. Nick's Berry. So this is like, she turns this, what are these called? Berries? No, this thingy, Jiggy. Cone? Cone. Like, she turns them into cute little, like, I don't know what they're called, but they're cute, but I would be too scared to do that. Okay, now, okay. The Prairie Schooler brought back Hocus Pocus. Cheryl has this finished from years ago, because this is a pattern they're re-releasing Prairie Schooler. The Prairie Schooler retired and sold all of their catalog to 123 Stitch. No, sorry. Sold all of their catalog to Hoffman. And so Hoffman releases them over time. So super excited. So Cheryl's going to bring that for us to show. These are the buttons I was talking about earlier. This is the tropical green that we talked about earlier. We have another Mary Making Mini, October 31st. I think this is the 13th one, because I kind of looked that up. I think it'd be pretty cool to do like a collage of them. This is Home of a Needle Worker number two. So there's three of these she has out, so we got this. And we also have the Christmas Ornaments by Just Cross Stitch. So that is everything that we have new, and I can take any questions that you have. Um, and just for that tease that I gave, I'm going to be announcing that later in September. It's a, it's going to be fun. You guys are going to love it. It's going to have lots of options. Um, but Lori and I are busy stitching. I think I'm ahead of Lori, but I'm trying. Lori hasn't even seen it because I'm trying to surprise her. But I guess if she's watching, she's. Oh man, she just saw it. Um, but we're going to have something to present to you. Um, and the reason we're not telling you is because we want it to be a surprise. So I'll take any other questions that you guys have. Well, we have some shout outs first. Yes. Sorry. So Debbie Thibault changed the Happy Camper Cross Stitch up a bit. My son is driving with their two dogs. One is a shepherd and one is a Weimaringer. How do you say that? Oh, oh. Why Meringer in the back of a thin blue line flag in support of his law enforcement career. The camper will house his wife and three sons. I love those dogs. I love the thin blue line. I love all of it. And then Sherry, oh my gosh, she showed this to me last week and I love it. Sherry Bing is a big fan. I love her. She finished her pumpkin in time for her fall mantle. If it's still what if it was only wasn't 90 outside so she took the Quaker pumpkin pattern she put it on a black fabric and then um, she uh, changed I don't know if she changed the floss or not but then she put a cute little bow and then we have our winner for yes and our winner is Shannon Bromo she, she it says I gave myself an airstream and I love that gray that's why we picked it because I love the gray and the denim Yay, that's so Okay, and then questions. Okay. Um, from Shannon Berkemeyer, when you change out colors and patterns, do you worry about shading and variation of colors? No. What I do is I will take my fabric with me to the store or to the, my store is right there behind me, um, literally, and I just go to our carousel or, and I just lay them out. Let me see, I might have one. Anyway, I just lay them out and then you can see it by laying it out. And then if the colors are too, they fight too much, I'll change one. I'll pick, if I have three colors and one is sticking out, I'll change that one. Or if I have two and they're fighting each other, I'll say, okay, I like this one the best, remove it. And I just kind of play. And I really do take my time with that because I want to have a really nice result. And then uh, Donna Cook says, is Kimberly's orange polish color shrimp? No. This is some weird color. I didn't write the number down, but it said on the bottle neon. Oh, I know. And so I should, I don't know. I almost had to redo it, but I just I really didn't have time. Uh, Debbie Rhodes says, could I tea dye an old project that yellowed? I, 
have no idea if you could tea dye once it is done. Um, maybe somebody in the comments would know. I am way too scared to try that. That's like way outside my comfort zone. Um, I do, I mean, I'm going to have to try it at some point. And Cheryl was really nice and said she would dye me some. I'm just like scared. Um, but it smells really nice because, you know, I love iced tea. It doesn't really smell like tea, but it, the first thing that Denise and I both separately picked it up and smelled it. Okay, Denise and I are kind of twins. Like, we kind of have the same personality, and so we both were like, oh, let me smell it. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Um, for the um, little cone that you were doing. Oh, yes. Like, what uh, is that? People, some people said cones. Somebody else said strawberries. Yes, know. they're cute. I would be so scared. But I'm really trying to step out of my comfort zone by doing, combining all the things. So one day. And Rob Payton says, is it possible to add the ability to purchase the needle floss and fabric to the pattern page? Um, that's like easier said than done, but it is on our wish list for sure. It probably won't happen anytime soon, but yes, that would be great. I know um, other people do that, um, but if you ever don't have the time, just call customer service and they can do that order for you and call you back with your total and all that if you don't have time because we want you to be happy. Uh, Lillian Ross says, can you recommend a good magazine subscription for cross-stitch and quilting? Oh my goodness, I can't because I subscribe to them and I get frustrated every time I get one. Um, there's one, okay, there's one that had a pug in it and I love it and I bought the kit. It's, and it's, uh, it's overseas. It's UK. UK. There's one in the UK and that one, let me tell you, that pug pattern, I can't wait to make it. I'm going to put it right in Kevin's office. <laughs> I'm going to put it right on his door and he's, yeah. Just for him, he loves Piggy. <laughs> oh, and Lori Holt said, no, you're not ahead of me, LOL, or maybe you are. Oh, no, you can't beat me. I'm going to be on the plane stitching like crazy. I'm going to try to have, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm, I got to, I got to be done soon. Um, Dot Dot Goose Design says, uh, do you have the Halloween pattern on your website? The one that we just. Yes, we should. Is the yeah. tiny modern yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have like 20. So we're going to order more today because we know those are going to sell out. Um, but I was like, I can believe that two people like already started it. Like, you know, like usually when you see stuff, you're like, oh, like I saw the pumpkin that I want to start. Uh, Donna Cook said oh. that she thought your signature nail color is shrimp. It oh, is. It used to be what, Cajun shrimp? It is Cajun shrimp, but they don't have it there. So, okay, so kind of like this, like when stuff like this comes in that I love, I'm always jealous when other people start. So then when, when Cheryl brought it, I was like, oh, I got to start it. Like it made, it was so good because it inspired me to like, oh, I really love it even more that Cheryl made it. And so I'm going to make it and I'm going to turn it into, I'm going to, I'm going to do something cute with it. So awesome guys, thanks for chatting with me today. Um, I love to see all your stuff. I would love for you to follow our uh, Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. I've had fun with you today and I hope I've inspired you in some way. And I'm really apologize for my tutorial for getting some of my steps. That would be called um, beginner. So um, I'll see you guys next week.